So thanks everybody for joining. We will go ahead and get started. I think there'll be a few more people who might join in, um, but I know this will probably take the full hour and apologies again for starting late. Um, I got distracted on another meeting. Um, that's East Coast time and I get confused. Um, but yeah, so this is Sarba. She is local to Portland, um, heavily involved in a number of different security organizations. And uh, the OWASP chapter is great to have her here to kind of talk about her journey to getting her CISSP. So I'll go ahead and hang it off, hand it off to her. Thanks a lot, uh, Kendra. It's my absolute honor and pleasure to be here with all of you. And uh, I just can't wait to get started to share my journey of becoming the uh, CISSP with all of you. And this is going to be about my life lessons as well as my study tips. So let's get started. And uh, special thanks to everyone who made it to today's meeting. I appreciate it. So uh, first things first. Who am I? Uh, so I am currently a product security consultant at Abqua Bank. Uh, I have eight years of experience in uh, pen testing, security pre-sales and IT risk and security consulting across India, Indonesia and Europe. So my work has actually allowed me to do a little bit of traveling around the world and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, I'm actually a volunteer and mentor at heart. Uh, I am very passionate about education equity and about uh, empowering everyone and especially like women and women of color in cybersecurity. So uh, I'm part of uh, women in cybersecurity, uh, uh, Oregon affiliate, InfoSec Girls, uh, Breaking Barrier for Women in Cybersecurity, Empower Her Cybersecurity. And I also write uh, content for a free online platform called Access Cyber, which is again, just an initiative to empower uh, everyone with free resources on cybersecurity. So in essence, this is who I am. And I'm actually inspired to build a curious, compassionate and cyber smart world. A little bit about that towards the end of today's presentation. And I hope you enjoy this. So now uh, coming to the first fundamental question, why CISSP? So, I'll first maybe for those of you who are familiar about it uh, uh, and for those of you who are who are relatively new to this certification or to this concept. So CISP or CISSP is one of the most uh, amazing um, vendor neutral and technology neutral certification on cybersecurity. And it's like an independent information security certification uh, by the International Information System Security Certification Consortium. So I bet you to, you know, pronounce it quickly. It could be like a tongue twister. So that's ISC Square, which is one amazing organization. So why CISSP for me? So there's a small story behind that. Uh, when I started working, um, I got an opportunity to work in a cybersecurity center of excellence in my first organization. And one of my colleagues actually got his CISSP. And that's where, you know, the starry eyed um, new uh, being in cybersecurity in me just took some time off and Googled about the cert. And when I found out about the level of rigor, the vastness of the domains and the reputation that it had, I was so amazed. And that's where I decided somewhere I wrote in my diary that one day I'll become a CISSP. And the reason behind that was that I had a desire to be a well-rounded cybersecurity professional. So somebody who has uh, knowledge about the key domains in cybersecurity because as we know it's a huge ocean and uh, you cannot you know know everything about it but CISSP is definitely a good starting point for you to become well-rounded to get that exposure across the different domains so 
that was my main goal and in my career i actually want to grow a lot in um, the cyber security consulting and and advisory roles so that was also another motivating point for me then um, as i mentioned like this is a widely recognized and respected certification so uh, i was very interested to pursue this and i mean this certification opens up a lot of good opportunities in terms of jobs in terms of career progress progression so it's uh, it's a great um, starting point i would say and the other goal that i had was that i wanted to actually uh, expand my learning and uh, networking opportunities so as of now uh like as of january 1st 2021 there are almost like 140 plus thousand isc square members around the world who, uh, with the cissp cert and i wanted to be one of them and i and that also uh, i wanted to explore the networking and learning options after that so these were the three wise that i had in mind when i planned for the ssp or the cissp now let's come to how it all started so i am going to be very honest with all of you about my aspirations to reality and i'm sure a lot of you might relate to that as well so in 2012 the freshly um, graduated person who had an undergrad degree in computer science and engineering so she that is me i started my uh, first job from and then uh, luckily i mean after moving in i was uh, i got an opportunity to work with a security center of excellence i got some initial hands on experience on pen testing on security analysis assessments and so on from 2015 i had this thing in mind that i'll do i'll get the sis i'll get it but procrastination just took over me and it took me years to actually convince myself to act, go ahead and uh, book my exam because the fear the insecurity the uh, the fear of the unknown all that you know and the procrastination played into it and i it wasn't till 2020 that i actually went ahead and booked my exam and i had 4 months exactly like 4 months at hand for the preparations so this is where the fun begins and uh, so in 2021 uh, just uh, in april i passed the exam i completed the endorsement process and i, I am now a ciscp so this is how my aspirations turned into reality and how did i really study for the ciscp exam i literally burned the midnight oil and this means uh, there would be days when i would can keep studying till maybe 4 or 5 am in the morning and but the point here is that this preparation did not you know it was not stemmed in anger it was not stemmed in frustration it was just stemmed in this feeling of awe that is so much to learn in security and i'm i'm being very honest when i'm saying this so i also realized early on when i started preparing for this exam that this was about strategic breadth and not technical depth so this is something i want all of you to remember if you are preparing for the exam so this is like a mile wide and then not an inch deep maybe longer i mean uh, deeper than an inch but this is more focused on the breadth on the strategic thinking that you have as a uh, cyber security professional more than how uh, you want to get into the weeds then uh, what i did is i read and reread my study materials and i coupled it with videos so that i uh, consume the material in different formats because that's something which will also keep your motivation and your momentum going because if you tend to read a lot without watching videos 
then you might uh, sometimes lose track and then if your motivation goes down it might be difficult to again start picking up things uh, i did that uh, and my key focus was to understand key concepts uh, this is something uh, i'll discuss further as we go ahead in our presentation i maintained study notes for, for my reference but that's just me i love writing things down i love making points you are you can imagine me to be like a pen and paper person who's always jotting things down but that's just me i practiced hundreds of questions i will not lie about that and these questions um they uh, came from different sources um they came from different levels of expertise i just wanted to flex my mental muscles so that's the reason why i practiced i dreamt about multiple choice questions when i slept <laughs> so that's what i did i explained um, complex security concepts to my walls to my chairs to non living things when i didn't have a living person inside i learned a lot from study groups and that's something i will also share further and in essence i just worked hard on getting my fundamentals right and to build the cissp mindset so that's also something i'll be focusing on and i think in essence i had a little bit of fear i had insecurities i had the fear of the unknown but i enjoyed this roller coaster ride so now uh, as there's a very famous book by uh, the chinese author which is sun tzu and he says that in order to win in every battle you have to know yourself and your enemy very well and the cisp exam is not uh, an enemy but it is something that is like a great armor to you in your um, uh, journey as a cyber security professional but you have to know yourself and you have to know the exam before you decide to take it so in summary it's a 3 hour exam it's a computer adaptive test uh, format where you will have multiple choice questions coming in and uh, the level of uh, i mean uh, difficulty also gets adjusted depending on how you do in the exam there are 150 plus, uh, exam uh, questions but depending on how you do in the exam your exam might end earlier than 150 uh the passing score is 700 out of 1000 points but you will not have visibility on this score unless you don't fail in the exam uh there's a domain wide wise weightage per um, domain and you also have to ensure that you read the isc square code of ethics and that's something that also inspires me and makes me happy to be uh, a part of Uh, this process is because this is completely the process is driven on ethics which is something that's of absolute importance in today's world especially in cyber security so there are eight domains uh, and i uh, i mean in this session this is not something where i'll take you through each and every domain but i just want to take you or let you know that there are eight domains um and it touches upon primarily every concept in cyber security so from risk management to asset security to engineering to network security to um, security assessments to identity and access management to even secure coding and secure development so in essence these are most of the domains that you are going to focus on i recommend that before you begin your preparation do a little bit of self assessment a little bit of uh, uh, contemplation to see which are your strength areas and which are your weak areas because in the exam it's not that if you're amazing at risk management and you hate network security that's not how it will uh, work out if you want to really pass the exam so you, ha you have to do uh, well in all the domains and that's why it's important for you to do this self analysis so that you know which are the areas that you need to pay extra attention in 
experience criteria so this is not an exam which you just uh, pass the test and then you are certified so there is a very rigorous endorsement process also that happens after you pass the test so i encourage you to go through the uh, experience criteria and if you are not yet eligible to be a sysp uh, you can consider being an associate of an is of isc square so that's a option for you to consider find a mentor and this could be someone who um, whom you can just reach out to you can share your thoughts you can someone who can actually give you this mental support because this is going to be the preparation will take your mental bandwidth and your emotional uh, it will test you emotionally also at times so i recommend that please find a mentor so this was all about knowing yourself and the exam now coming to first things first um a lot of people uh, have written many posts on the study materials and the preparation that you need to do for isc square uh, my uh, basic recommendation for you is please start with the cissp exam outline which is by isc square it's basically a summary of all the eight domains followed by the topics that are expected in the exam for the it's a syllabus of your exam so please go through that and there are two reasons for that one is uh, you get an overview of what lies ahead of you and you get a hang of the latest syllabus so it changes every 3 years and the latest one that you have now is from may 1st of 2021 uh, please ensure that you do check the cissp exam outline uh, by isc square and that can be also be like a checklist for you to ensure that all the topics that are there you cover them before your actual exam so sometimes you might miss out on a few of them so that's something then please please if you decided that you want to have this exam i mean certification please book your exam date do not uh, uh, i mean um, procrastinate on it because no matter how daunting it might seem to be four five months of dedicated continuous um, effort is good enough for you to actually go ahead and uh, get uh, certified and there's a res rescheduling fees of 50 dollars but use it only when there's a last resort or an apocalypse that strikes so don't don't use that and i'll tell you this with experience even on the exam day you will never feel fully prepared enough for this exam but that's okay that's and if you ha actually have that feeling that means you have put in seriousness in your preparation so just go ahead and book your exam date because that will be a great motivating factor for you to actually put rigor in your preparations define your study strategy and this will vary from person to person and i uh, will not be here giving you the exact details of what you should study so i have tried to put that together uh, loosely but it's you who is going to figure out what works the best for you first step i would say is to gather all your study materials uh this could be i loved reading through the ebook so that was my way of learning but some people prefer physical books and but please include a ebook or a physical book a practice test video courses mobile applications uh including maybe flash cards and also study groups so these are some of the key elements that you must consider in your study strategy and be reasonable be kind to yourself do not um, push yourself too hard uh, it's like a marathon you have to study every day in uh, reasonable chunks something that you can do something that you would enjoy doing but you have to do it every day you cannot just give it up for like 10 days and then again start preparing preparing 
uh, and create some milestones also so that till your exam date so that once you achieve those milestones you feel accomplished and those could be maybe the eight domains so you can break the eight domains into per week or something like that that would work best for you uh, so these are some of the key things that you should consider um, before you actually start your preparations now uh, getting the fundamentals right uh, i want to take a moment to tell you that this is again not it's about strategic breadth and not about technical depth so please remember that and uh, there are so many amazing study materials out there but i what worked for me this is what i am sharing i mean um, you can you are always free to explore other options for me i started with the official study guide which is co-authored by mike chapel and also the official uh, practice test so these are the cybex um, official uh, cissp preparation uh, guide as well as the practice test i spent 4 to 5 weeks just you know reading through the entire official study guide and also you know making notes finishing domain level questions per after i finished each domain and also i tried to complement it with a good video course so kelly handerhan she is a legend she is an amazing i mean instructor in cyber security so uh, when you are actually starting on um, getting your fundamentals right please complement your um, i mean studies with a good video course so that you have the right mix of uh, content from different uh, mediums test your understanding thoroughly test it so don't i mean uh, treat this as an exam where uh, i think we all also sometimes have this tendency that if we are preparing for an exam we just need to you know get things right and we have to get the suitable questions that might be useful this exam will actually just uh, test your understanding on key concepts and how you apply it so please spend some time practice as many questions from different sources some of the preferred ones that i have are i would recommend are boson um, adam gordon has an amazing free question of the day initiative that he runs on twitter please follow that all in one study guide by shawn harris also has some really good technically uh, adept questions so that could be a good perspective for you to develop your understanding flash cards pocket prep there are many materials out there but the bottom line is test your understanding and as you identify your weak areas in that just watch videos so that you clarify those doubts don't keep uh, don't club all your weak areas till the last two weeks like incrementally start working on them as you prepare collaborate with others very important you cannot do this alone and that's why study groups that's why even uh, sub reddit of cissp even discord groups these are great 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 resources for you to just network with others you know uh, participate in passionate discussions about complex security topics you are actually touted to be one of the security leaders who will give direction to organizations on strategic initiatives in security so develop that mindset develop that thinking uh, and you know discuss case studies gather and speak to people who have actually also appeared for the cissp get their understanding on how things work and even on the job try to figure out what are the concepts that you are reading through this through your preparation how does that apply to your work uh, to your current situation so do that analysis this is really it's a very fulfilling experience this preparation itself and then become the cyber security advisor for life so this exam doesn't ask you to fix 
network level connections or does it ask you to configure a firewall or so on but it will definitely ask you that if there's a security uh, decision that needs to be taken considering uh, business outcomes considering human safety how are you going to think how are you going to um, act in that situation so this uh, i mean uh, along with getting your fundamentals right start building this mindset and that's something i'll talk about in the next slide which is about building the cissp mindset so this uh, mindset will actually set you apart uh, and uh, the idea here is that you think end game and this is i am co uh, quoting uh, kelly handerhan in this think end game security should enable business so even though we might have the best in class security um analyzer code analyzer which is there but if your company is a mid size or a small size company that cannot afford to have a big tool then what are the other options you can have to enable security so those are i mean the strategic kind of uh, bent of mind that you have to have so at the end you this exam will help you become that strategic security advisor while us i mean so while answering your question put on that hat sometimes um, the best answer may not be the right answer in this exam so try to weigh try to think logically on uh, and try to bring, bring in some context of what the question is actually asking you so it is not a general knowledge question where you have to take the right right answer the something that will uh, the best answer may not be the right answer so that's what i will mention here and how do you actually uh, weigh those answer options so always consider cost human safety and business outcomes in the security decision so during the exam as well and also in real life i think this is a key concept that we should all Uh, think about and try to inculcate it two of my favorite resources that i am sharing with all of you one is uh, why you will pass the cissp exam by kelly handerhan please watch it once before you begin your preparations and once before the day of your exam you can also watch it multiple times in the meanwhile if you enjoy it but this is one uh, video that you must not skip you, uh, it will help you get into that mindset uh, luke ahmed is again one uh, amazing uh, professional who has this uh, group called study notes and theory so he has a book called think like a manager where he presents case studies per domain and you have questions to solve so I, i would recommend that book as well uh, and then what are the free learning resources i am someone who's always very economically decisive in my uh, in any key thing that i do in life so the good news is that for cissp there are some exceptional individuals out there who are uh, just you know creating these free learning resources for the community and that's something which is incredible and one person i would truly appreciate is rob witcher he runs a, a youtube channel called destination cis destination certification he has great cissp mind map videos for cissp domain so please go look at it it covers all the security concepts with great graphics and explanations then kelly handerhan i think i believe that her course on cyber right now is also free so that's something to consider larry greenblatt uh, greenblatt my apologies so he uh, has a good video on cissp 2020 exam tips so this could be one of the best bet you have on qualitative versus quantitative analysis of any question please look at it it's very interesting and if you're a star wars fan you will enjoy it um then 
Adam Gordon uh, has a question of the day that he runs on Twitter. So please follow him. Please answer. Uh, just try answering those questions. It's a good exercise for the brain. IT Dojo is a, another good channel that has a question of the day. So although like he is not actively posting that right now, but uh, the previous videos also are a good point for you to just, you know, uh, get that rigor in your preparation. So, And there are many CISSP preparation apps on Android and Apple platform. So just, you know, go to the Play Store, uh, just try to see that you're not downloading any malicious app. But there are some really good verified apps which are also freely available. Please try and explore that. Uh, all these are exceptional uh, learning resources. So, I mean, just flee, feel free to make the most of it. Uh, CISSP study groups. Uh, I am a part of Empower Her Cybersecurity EHC, which is a community for, by, uh, and dedicated to the women of color in cybersecurity. We have an excellent study group. So if you are a person, I mean, woman of color, this could be a great, uh, I mean, and it's a free community. Everyone is welcome. So please feel free to enroll if you want to explore this option. Discord, uh, the search station um, on a group on Discord is amazing. I have not uh, been an active member, but a lot of my peers, a lot of my uh, mentors, they, uh, I mean, have really good feedback about that. And then there's the CISSP subreddit. Uh, just please explore that as well. But Again, with a caution that do not overwhelm yourself with too many uh, posts uh, that describe the exam as a beast, as, a, as something you cannot conquer. So do it in moderation. But these are really good, interesting uh, areas where you can socialize with people and just share thoughts, uh, discuss questions, and so on. Now, moving forward, two weeks before the exam, Stay calm and revise on because you'll never feel prepared for the exam. Uh, so two weeks before the exam, just revise and practice in loops. This is the only suggestion I would have. So when I say revise, it's like each topic summary section of your official study guide. That's your best friend, by the way. So just try to revise through it. 11th hour CISSP by Eric Conrad is again a very good uh, tool uh, for or a very good book for you to see and follow through. Destination certification mind maps on CISSP is a must because that will really help you. Uh, I mean, just, you know, build in all the concepts that you have in your mind. So these are some of the key resources. And apart from that, if there's an, any other resource that you feel is good enough, please just use it. And also maybe your own study notes. So through your process, if you're building study notes, two weeks before the exam is the best time to go over it, to think over it, to work on your um, weak areas. And another good recommendation that I have is Mike Chappell runs an excellent um, LinkedIn learning course on CISSP. So that's something I would highly recommend, um, especially if you're closer to the exam. But yeah, I mean, that is again an, uh, a resource that you can start using early on in your preparations as well. Practice, flex your mental muscles. Practice may, uh, mainly from a automated test engine like Boson that randomly emulates a real world exam. Do that because that will help you manage your anxiety. Because if you just keep reading, if you keep uh, accumulating the information without actually putting it to use, you will not uh, be able to train your brain to actually think through the questions. So that's why please practice. Please follow the security advisor mindset when you answer the questions. And I mean, please try to... Uh, solve as many as questions from different sources in test mode. So there's a practice mode where you get 
uh, answer to a question right away. But that I wouldn't suggest is the best way because that will give you a sense of um, satisfaction that yes, I got it right. Yes, I got it wrong. But in the real exam, you will have to really wait till the end to see your results. So please practice these exams in test mode as well and wait till the end to see your results. Now on the exam uh, day, this is what I did. I first of all put together my identity proofs for the exam, very important because if you cannot be, if your identity cannot be verified, then you will not be admitted in the exam. I reminded myself to be calm. I took long breaths. I know it's something that's underrated, underrated but taking long breaths can help you a lot in many situations. And I listened to my favorite play playlist as I went to the exam. Uh, at the exam center, I arrived earlier than expected. I followed the COVID pro protocols, including wearing a face mask during the entire exam. So if you're not someone who's very comfortable with a COVID mask, so until and unless the guidelines don't change, maybe you can do a practice test with a mask on as well, just to see if you're comfortable. Read and agree on the non-disclosure agreement within five minutes, because if you don't do that, your exam will get forfeited. Um, read each question twice before selecting the answer. And this is something that helped me because usually when you're anxious, when you have this buildup of all the work that you've done in, you just want to get done with that exam. But take some time off, try to revise uh, try to read through a question and just figure out what it's actually asking you. And if it's easier, try to even maybe break down the question uh, in a rough um, pad that you will get. So try to do that, but read through it before you actually answer it. And put on the security advisor hat, select the answers that best fulfill the goals of human human safety, economic viability, and business goals. For me, I finished my 100 questions in 90 minutes, and then the exam stopped. And then I was dazed. I didn't know what to do. I just froze. And then I gathered myself, uh, went to the uh, front desk, which, and then I could hear the whirling sound of the printer. And then I got my result sheet that said that I was I had passed and I was so happy at that moment. So I hope you a lot of you also experience something similar like that. But yeah, just stay calm and grounded in your exam day. How has the CISSP certification helped me? It has opened my life to many amazing professional initiatives and including my current job offer. So that's something that I, uh, or current role uh, that came in after I got my CISSP cert. And there are some great networking opportunities. So once you become uh, CISSP, you uh, become an ISC Square member as well. And that opens your opportunity to volunteer in a number of initiatives. You can be a part of your local ISC Square chapter that has amazing, well-grounded um, experienced individuals. Uh, then, and CISSP is just a first step. So there's this continuous learning process, which is the part of the CPE that's embedded into this process if you want to maintain your certification. So that rigor also uh, ensures that you don't um, give up on learning and that you continuously keep learning. So that's something I love about being a CISSP. And then I think strategic mindset on security. After this certification, I feel a lot more confident when I have security related conversations with a variety of audiences, including technical and non-technical audiences. So, uh, or I wouldn't say non-technical is not the right word, but people who are more aligned to business or to management positions than to, you know, hardcore technical stuff. 
So this is one certification that can help you balance that. You can have really great conversations. You can learn a lot. You can open your, um, I mean, life to many amazing opportunities. So this is how the certification has helped me. And in closing, I would like to say that do or complete this cert only if you really want to. I mean, this is a great, great, great learning experience. You will not be the same person that you were when you started preparing for CISSP. So in those four months, there will be a huge shift that will happen in your mindset, in your knowledge, in your perspective of things. In, uh, there is a lot, actually. And this is just not a cert that you will just you're done with it and then you the official study guide will also become a good reference point for you whenever in your career you want to learn more about a topic so these things will stay with you for life but do it only if you really want to assess your job role your future aspirations seek mentorship advice and figure out if it's the right option for you because uh, there's some financial um, implications, so you have to pay a certain amount to register for the exam. That's not a very small amount, so do it only if you believe in it. But having said that, uh, the point here is don't be afraid. Do not think that you cannot do it. I could do it, and if I could do it, I feel anyone in the world can do it. No matter what the outcome is, I mean, by the time you will have prepared for this exam, you'll be more knowledgeable, insightful, and experienced. So don't be afraid uh, and just give it your best. So that brings us to give it your best. The four to five months of preparation will need your sacrifice, including reduced social time, long study hours, long, and other challenges. There would be days when you would feel very demotivated and drained out. But since we are all in the Pacific Northwest region, we, are, we all have experienced our hikes and the hardest climbs or the hardest hikes often lead to the best view. So just treat your uh, exam preparations in that perspective and in no time you will be a CISSP. So that, with that, I want to take a moment to just pay a small tribute to my uh, grandfather who passed away last Friday due to COVID. Um, he always believed in the power of knowledge. He read every single day for all the days of his adult life. He always believed in learning and sharing. That's something that he inspired me to do. And his ordinary life was extraordinary because he stayed curious and compassionate always. So I urge you to do that also. Stay curious, stay compassionate, and stay cyber smart. So with that, we come to the end of today's presentation. I am, uh, I mean, they're on LinkedIn, active there. So you can please feel free to reach out and connect with me and I'll be happy to help you with any um, support that you would need in your CIS preparations or beyond. So thank you so much once again uh, to Kendra, uh, David, John, and um, Terry, and the entire amazing OAS Portland chapter for having me. And I'm so grateful to be here today. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, if you guys do have any questions, feel free to ask them now. Um, and then this session is recorded, so we will post it later. Um, I think Sydney, you have a question on what are the local study groups uh, I recommend. So uh, I am not fully aware of a local study group here in Portland, but there are many virtual communities now that run these study groups, which are free. Um, so I would recommend, and you can start your own basically. So maybe the... Uh, 
attendees of today's session can take a moment and uh, just you know connect with each other and form a local study group that makes sense and uh, thank you everyone for your kind words uh, i think tom has a question of whether i'll be able to yeah i can share the slides uh, so my name uh, yeah. Bill Asty. Hi, Bill. Uh, I was just curious. Uh, yeah. I have a CISSP, and right. I was curious whether you took the exam in your native language or you took it in English. I took it in English. Okay, that yeah. uh, that must have been difficult for you then. Not really, because I've studied English for most of my adult life. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was an interesting exam. It was. Uh, uh, I took it when they still had 12 domains. Okay. And uh, that was very difficult, especially the encryption part of it. Okay. Uh, cryptography was very difficult. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, I, uh, I had a quick question. Thank you for the yeah. presentation, by the way, it was great. Thank you. Um, so I was curious why you decided to go for the CISSP in the first place. Um, was it more of like a personal challenge or was it like advantageous to your career? Um, and if it was like advantageous to your career, did you like realize those benefits? Yes, uh, thanks. That's a great question. And I tried to cover that element in my uh, initial slides. So I think I was at a point in my career where I'm a mid career cybersecurity professional and I needed something to actually keep my uh, motivation going uh, and I wanted to uh, build my career path in the more strategic cybersecurity direction in consulting. So that's why I took the CISSP and I did realize the benefits because a lot of uh, the interviewers started noticing me. So I think you stand out a little bit when you have a CISSP, especially it's a great way to put your foot on the door in job interviews. But again, I mean, if you do not uh, have the necessary expertise in that uh, specific job requirement, then that will not really add up a lot. But having said that, I think it helped me uh, get a job that I wanted to have and also have additional benefits and that has also given me a motivation like it happens I think it's human that when you achieve something that you thought was impossible you are then motivated to do better things so that's where I think my next target is to expand my knowledge in the cloud security area well, thank you CISP was a great step uh, stepping stone for that <laughs> Hi, Sarva. David Conrad here. Hi, David. So, hi. Excellent presentation. Thank you. And you know, like we've talked, highly recommend doing CCSP next and happy to help any way I can there. Um, I'm curious, when you took the test, mm -hmm. how, how many of the questions generally did you find like, well, if it was an open book and you could just memorize the technical answer, you could get it versus mm -hmm. the trickier, you have to really understand the subject matter and how to apply it. Uh, sure, David. Uh, thanks for the question. And maybe I want to also just introduce you briefly to the entire group. So David is my colleague at Umqua Bank. He's a senior uh, architect uh, who's specializing in security. And he's amazing in encouraging others. So thanks, David, for being here and for being so supportive. Uh, so to your question, that's a very good one. Um, I think the, there was a small minor, minority and I would say maybe 5%, 5 to 7% of the questions were pretty straightforward where I just knew that this is the right technical answer. But uh, apart from that, uh, a lot of them were somewhere in between the technical part and, you know, thinking through it. So uh, that was my experience. I am curious about you. Uh, what was your experience? Yeah, for me, I would say there were there were probably ten percent where okay. if you had the book, you knew the answer because it was right. a technical thing that was uh, knowable. 
Okay. It's the whole the Larry video you mentioned earlier, the Kirk okay. versus Spock. Yes. Um, so you have to use Kirk 90% of the time and use yes. your judgment and knowledge as as the captain and 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 kind of try to figure out what it is. And that's the, that was the hardest part of the test is understanding what are they asking for. Usually right. you can eliminate and get to two answers, but it's yes. like, well, they're both right. So which both one right. and which one is the most right? right? And that's really the hard part. Um, and like you, when I got the hundred questions and was done, mm. I'm like, oh, I'm sure I failed. That was really <laughs> hard. But yeah, you, you just never know. So yes. it's it's one of those one of those tests. It's uh, I agree, worthwhile, but uh, extremely difficult, even if you're well prepared. Yes, yes, you're right. There's this element of uh, the unknown which is there. Yeah, I agree. Any other questions? All right, if there are no other questions, then we will end it. So thank you all for joining and thanks again for presenting. And like I said, we will be posting um, a version of this. So yeah. Thank you for having me, Kendra. Thank <laughs> you.